Yeah, we're at the Viking Aircraft Engines and we're uh, doing a tip of the week with uh, uh, homebuilthelp.com. What we're going to show today is how to, let's just say you wanted to build your own airplane uh, out of steel tubing or you wanted to do an engine mount or a landing gear or whatever. You wanted to do something out of steel tubing and you wouldn't, you didn't really know where to start. What we've got here is the modern way of doing this kind of a job, okay? Um, let's say you're not familiar with doing a CAD drawing of your project. You might be able to come up with the four points or five points where your engine's going to mount to the airplane. Or you might be able to come up with the basic shape of your fuselage if you're going to make a fuselage for an airplane. At that point, you can find a company that cuts tubing with a CNC machine um, and they might be able to put it into a CAD program for you in order to be able to cut the pieces for you. And you will get a kit of tubes that are labeled and will have the right fish mouth at each end of the tube. And once you have your kit, then you're ready to start putting something together. <clears throat> now what we have found for prototyping mostly, um, until you're setting up a, a, a welding jig, is that you can do your own one-off if you're very careful about using these pre-cut precision made pieces of tubing. Um, for instance, as you're looking at this drawing, there are bushings or places to attach the engine and to attach the mount to the firewall at every junction. Okay, like here we have a welding table that, have, that has holes and tapped holes right into the table and it mimics the aircraft firewall. Now we're seeing from our drawing that for instance this tube will have a bushing at the end. Now rather than setting this tube into this and trying to hold this over here and getting it all set up ahead of time on the table, <clears throat> it's not that you can't do that because these pieces are very precise and you could tack it as you go but then after it's all tacked together you have to you know now weld underneath here and underneath here. It's very difficult to get to at the end and you do want your parts to stay bolted to your table for as long as possible to prevent motion between the parts and shrinkage and warpage. So, for instance here we're seeing that this bushing is going to be welded into this tube. And we're going to do that before we take the assembly and bolt it to the table just to make it easy because we can weld very easily on a flat surface and flip it over and weld the other side. Now from our drawing we can tell uh, that this tube when it sits like this it's pretty much down to the table okay and the angle is already made for us if we're very careful about how we set the tube up against the bushing now we're gonna have to pull it up just a little bit in order to get room to weld the bottom now you can get yourself some one two three blocks or some some steel blocks of any kind of sort just to kind of have the things that you need to um, to hold things rigidly in place. And like I said, you know, you, you want to, if you're going to do a jigless design like this for your one off prototype, you want to make sure that everything is like that this is not rotated, this is not rotated this way, um, that after you kind of have it there, you put your finger here and you rely on the precision of the CNC machine cut to hold it exactly where you want it when you put your first tack on there. So take your time just to kind of really make sure that there's no daylight anywhere and then put a tack in a couple of spots and then finish weld this part in order to make it easy on yourself to weld it on the table rather than having to go and be a contortionist and turn your welding torch up and down and so forth and so on. I would say that the, the TIG welding process is probably the easiest to use for this. Oxyacetylene also will work, but you're definitely going to get less warpage and a more of a precise job without having to heat an entire cluster of welds as you move along. We 
we got to this point, we showed how to weld these on the table. We now have this rigged up. This particular engine mount has a flat, um, actually has a tilted firewall, which means that this is going to go uphill on us. So this, this piece in here ended up being this way a little bit, tilted this way, and we could see that from the cut on the fish mouth here. Um, we're not concerned about this being absolutely perfect yet. We, we did get one tack here, and we got one tack over here. We realized that we still have the option of moving this a little bit. These bolts are not very tight, they're just snug. And once we put our tubes from the upper corners down to here, uh, any misalignment that we've introduced so far will straighten out. So um, that's the next step, is to fabricate the tube from here and the tube from here. And we're going to weld those to our bushings like we did on the flat table, and then set that up. Okay, so now since we have some things we can rely on, we can rely on this table being flat, and um, we can rely on the tubes because the CAD program and the CNC machine, we'd have to rely that on that as being accurate. And because of that, we're able to get this close to perfect without too much of a welding jig. We now put these tubes in. Uh, there's still a gap here, but we know that the reason for that is because this tube goes on the bottom. There's going to be another tube sitting on top. And we were able to fit the tube precisely here, a sixteenth of an inch down from this face, and put a tack there and a tack there. So now we have four points bolted to the welding table, and we know that the structure is, uh, is accurate. Okay, so we got, we got some of these tubes put together. Now I just had a piece of aluminum around, probably plywood with some, you know, pieces of aluminum, thin aluminum to shield it from the heat will work too. And for the Viking engine, which is what we're working on here, making a mount for that in a, in a Zenith um, for our, our new engine, we've got 10 inches and we got 12 inches from here up to here and we got 18 inches between these. So it's a very simple thing to make. You can make something that has these four holes and it just mimics the engine. And it's because this is the firewall and these holes would be like the engine um, rubbers. So, so we put some 3 8 holes, 10 inches by 12 inches from here to here and 18 inches apart. And we do that so that we can now start you know, putting in the bushings here and and get the next tube going. Now if you check this out here, you can see the precision of having CNC tubes made. There's already a, a pocket here between the bushing and the existing tube. And then this tube just drops right in there. And it has a, uh, a perfect fit on the, uh, on the bushing.